We don't. We, um, you can you can double check and see if we're we're live on uh, on YouTube and streaming. But if we are, yep, you are. Hey everybody, welcome to Friday. Welcome to this week's live model. Um, usually we have Matt uh, helping us out with like some music, and we can sort of like get in the get in the groove. Yeah, I'm uh, I'm poorly equipped for such things. I, I could sing. Oh. Can you? Any requests out there? What What should Jody sing? Nope. <laughs> I'm not going to sing anything. Oh, come on. I think that that's what everybody wants, actually. <laughs> hey, everybody. Welcome back. For anyone coming back, or welcome if, it, if you're coming new. And if you are joining us for the first time, please let us know. If you're coming back... Let us know where you're coming from anyway, because I know some of you make some associations out there. But please let us know in the comments where you're coming in from and uh, and what you're excited to see today. Um, I'm I am Tyson, and I'm joined today by the effervescent Jody. So effervescent is my middle name. I mean, literally. That's true. One of several middle names, but it is one of them. That's true. <laughs> So um, today, let's show. Let's, let me let me show a little inspiration of what we're what we're going to be doing today. Let me see this. Okay. Um, I I just my my taste. I, I love looking at sometimes at sort of some of these low the low poly style. I, there might be a better term for it than that. And you could look at an image like this and suggest it's not necessarily low poly, but a simplified cartoonish style I don't know Jody what do you think is that yeah there's something that feels also kind of like a like a children's game or a children's animation kind of thing or something mm -hmm. I don't know but I don't want to say I can't say it's childish maybe no it's, I mean you're childish so maybe very much <laughs> um, or childlike childlike sorry there we go <laughs> nice save um, and actually, uh, we've seen on Reddit, th this is not done in SketchUp. We're going to try and do something like this, but I just wanted to give credit because this is sort of the starting inspiration. I I I'm going to terribly butcher this name if I attempt it, so I'm not going to, but I just want to give credit that this is some of the inspiration. But this is another bit where it's sort of just a vignette, and this one I believe was done in SketchUp. Do you remember the name, Jody? For that particular one? Oh, yeah. Geez. All right, no. put him on the spot. He's going to have to go do some research. Yeah. Um, I'll look him up. But these simplified vignettes. TBT. Yeah. So there's some fun stuff here. So let's let's look at this image. And actually, I will bring it up over here, and maybe we'll bring it bigger. So let's look at this image. What I think is interesting about something like this is you look at it and you, you say, okay, if I wanted to do this in SketchUp, this was not done in SketchUp. Again, I think it was it was Blender or, or Maya or something. I'm not sure. But if I wanted to, what are kind of the challenges? What are we going to have to deal with? Um, there's all sorts of pieces here that native SketchUp, you'd be like, eh, there's... Um, like, there's there's pieces here that are sort of multi, uh, curving in different directions that can get, you know, there's tools to do it, but can get tricky in SketchUp. There's a lot of variation here, um, which by default, SketchUp, you know, wants to be very precise. So we got to figure out some ways to do that. If we, um, if we look at... Again, just sort of the, the nature of the tiles on the roof, the nature of the bricks in the lighthouse. We're going to have to figure out a way to, to do that. And I think, and that's what's interesting. I, sometimes if you try a challenge like this, you may not find a good viable way. But if you do, I think it's really uh, always fun to push SketchUp into something that it's like sort of not natively good at but that you can find ways to do it with that said we're going to lean heavily on extensions to do some of this stuff 
An These extension are... show. Yeah. Sweet. I know. These rocks, we could we could manipulate polygons. We could use things like um, intersect with model, but we're going to speed that up using some extensions to try and create some sort of simplified rocks. So that's the idea. We'll see. We'll see how this goes. Um, it could all go very badly. <laughs> let's just set that. Let's set that up from the start. I'm going to set this over here to the side so I can look at it. All right. Um, and, and please, again, if there's thoughts on that, suggestions for how you think you might uh, attempt some of this, please throw comments. Um, I, I know in the forums and stuff, there's people out there who have just really ingenious ideas. Loves to see how some of you would do it. All right, here's Naraj. He's our new scale figure in SketchUp 2022, which we just released, what, a week and a half ago? Um, a week ago? Oh, yeah, I guess a week and a half. Man, something like that. Twice. I know. And uh, so let's just set Naraj over here to the side. And what should hide we start? Hide him behind the, the forest of toolbars. Oh, this isn't even the forest that I started with a little while ago. <laughs> I was I trying to... <laughs> I know. I would I wouldn't be able to see anything on my six forty by four eighty screen if I did that. Oh well if you'd ever get past your CRT monitor, you might, you know. <laughs> Hand crank. Exactly. I mean keep that hamster running. What should we start with? Um I don't know. Are you gonna try and do the are that actual lighthouse looking thing or are you gonna do something in the spirit of? I'm gonna do that but maybe with you know variation so let's start with just a really basic model to get the scale kind of in place and then we'll and then we'll dig into the, some of the details so we're just going to freeform this let's say based on Niraj let's say it's about like that we also had this uh I don't know if we'll end up doing this we had this idea as we we're discussing what to do um between Aaron and Matt and Jody and I have kind of creating this sort of vignette that um, again, if it's simplifying stuff, maybe we create it all and then we stick it like in a in a snow globe, given that it's snowy February. I think that sounds dreamy, especially if we can make it snow. Hey, Bill wants Ooh. to know how what you're what you got going on that's making your icons be so huge. Your cursor. Because that looks like an old guy extension right there. I can't see it. Where's that? <laughs> the the answer to that is far less interesting. <laughs> no. But I'll, I, I'll give you straight up. This week I've been working on recording some more videos, and I've been having issues with my video recording software and how it records the SketchUp icons. And I have been all over the place messing with my display settings and my icon settings. So this is just a result <laughs> of whatever I was... A, Experiment on Whiplash. in Mac OS that you, you're like, I don't know what I did. I, the only reason it's there now is because you don't know how to turn it off. I do. I, it's okay. it's literally whatever was left after I threw my hands up in screaming frustration at. <laughs> that's what it is. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Tyson. Oh, thanks, Jody. But I, that's why I say it's not. That's not a. It's not an interesting answer. Yeah, it's an answer though, so I guess that's something. Yeah. Another thing about this type of modeling that I think um, is a little bit fun, but it's uh, those of us who use SketchUp a lot, you like to try and resolve all the geometry. You like to have try and have nice, clean edges between surfaces because that's so key to the way that SketchUp resolves surfaces. Is that you need edges that, but this type of uh, modeling, we're just going to start like pushing groups and components together and letting them overlap, and it's not going to be as clean. And sometimes, depending on what you're modeling, that would drive you crazy. But in this case, it'll be a little bit fun just to basically be that lazy. It you could call it lazy or you could call it strategy. It's a little, it'll be a little bit of both. But um, I mean, I'm going to argue that sometimes laziness is a strategy. There you go. I mean, I, when I'm terrible at naming components, I think that's just lazy. It's not a good strategy. 
but you know, I, 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 I think you're right, Jody. Sometimes you can, can you be strategically lazy? Probably. Yeah. Um, it sounds a little bit like procrastination. It does. So probably so. Yeah. I'm gonna venture out to on a limb and say, yeah, procrastination is whenever you're being lazy on purpose. <laughs> Oh, Matt's in here dropping the dropping the deets on how to change the cursor size. Oh, I, thanks, Matt. Thank you. I do know how. I I'm not going to bother right now. So if it's really bugging some you, of you out there, I'm, I just you don't apologize. Need to. Matt just did it. Yeah. Oh, you I did. Guess I should be watching much. Did it Matt in the streaming? Post stuff in the in this in the chat. Oh, nice. All um, right, this is looking a lot like it already. Yeah, I, I need to be careful at this point because uh, this is supposed to be something that we're going to erase after we create the real version. This is just supposed to be the scale model. And already I'm like, ooh, okay. let's let's have some fun with the details. <laughs> let's make this super detailed. I know. I'm totally doing that. I got I to gotta back away. Um, okay, so let's see. Then we have something like this. And let's scale the top of this. And um, I, here's a question out there that I, I find is very personal. But so I just moved to 2022. I haven't set up my template yet, although I, I have brought in some styles. So my field of view is 35, which has the, been the, the default of SketchUp since since it began. My, I always change this. For me, I like 50. My field of view is 50. So I'm just curious out there, what do people like? What's their personal? Do they, do they stick with the default? Because there's no wrong answer here, right? It's just a personal preference. But for me, after I'm modeling a little bit, I'm like, ah, something's off. Oh, oh, that's it. It's just my own little idiosyncrasies. What about you, Jody? Do you have a field of view? Or is that for people who are too uh, nerdy? I, I don't have... Uh, idiosyncrasies for one <laughs> so that's weird um, uh, I'm not quite sure I don't I was, I was busy trying to read, read a post since I was, I was half ignoring you I'll oh. be honest. hey man So, sorry next time you can full ignore me it's cool <laughs> I'm, I'm going to ignore you for the rest of this call <laughs> um, no I'm sorry you said you have what field of field of view issues with when, when you're modeling you just like forget about stuff oh no i just i always change what the default is because i just oh have my personal yeah, no, preferences there's, there's never a um it doesn't matter if there's a default because i'm always i feel like i'm always kind of having to figure out what the heck i'm doing every time i start a new thing so that sounds sad huh i wish it did but i relate to it so much <laughs> There's so many things that I feel like at one point I was an expert at, and then I just now started to take that for granted. And I, I go come back to it, and I'm like, oh, wait, I don't even remember how to do that. Yeah. I do get that. Victor said 35 is his, his what he believes is the most natural view. Or maybe that's, you know, he does seem so. Yeah, I've never, I only mess with field of view if I've actually... If I'm trying to change what I'm seeing for like a screenshot, but when I'm actually modeling, I always stand default. I guess maybe a, a, a better question is: there, uh, is there any sort of personalization that uh, that people really like? Sort of how you personalize. Uh, how did we? What did we screw up by not making it the default in SketchUp? Is that what you're saying? Oh yeah, I just want to know what you screwed up on. It's a valid question. Um, what do I do? I usually hide the big toolbar. I usually drag a couple extra things into my top toolbar, like my standard views and my uh, like transparency and all those modes. Having done tech support for years and years, I'm I just I, I'm prone to not mess with the default settings because as soon as I'm trying to help somebody figure out what they're doing, then if I if my interface is different than I. I confuse everybody. We all get confused. <laughs> I don't know if it would 
if it's best at this point to like put in some some ground or just to leave that alone um I feel like the um I feel like the ground is easy to add easy enough to add later I do too I'm trying to like get a sense of I mean, how it, big our vignette should be but okay I'll come back to that let's let's dig into like methods for some of these rocks let's start with the rocks I think what do you think Jody does this this seem about um something like that a little side yeah I think it's yeah, good yeah. there's not a back there's not a back view of this on your art station side is there no okay so you're just gonna take a little creative license oh yeah that takes some liberties do you happen to have a key logger like Aaron runs oh I'm sorry everybody I don't uh, I've been asked that before if we go back to the laziness comment I forget about it <laughs> um, so what we have to do is find a way to remind you like on Wednesday or <laughs> so any time where you can actually just go mess around the, the thing I'll say I, I've said this uh, a few times but I, I have very custom keyboard shortcuts almost none of them except for maybe the move tool and that and, and using the Wacom tablet like I do ZX like the very key most common used um, tools to me are all right here and then from there it sort of spreads out so for me I have to map navigation so Z is zoom X for me is is pan and V is orbit and C is rectangle and B is push-pull those are the those are the things I use most often and why in that order I, I, I don't ask me that there's a rhyme or reason it's just what I got used to I, I don't even remember at this point but and then from there it's sort of like and, and I can try and call some out as we go but um, if you're gonna use a Wacom tablet to me I think mapping custom navigation keys is crucial because otherwise you'd be going across the keyboard for zoom hand for orbit or pan and O for orbit and and be losing it so I yeah, you're you're frustrating to watch and try and learn from the the, the way you what you're doing with your hands because you use your hands all wrong down there on that keyboard and stylus I, and i do i apologize why so Polygon. Marcus, Marcus wants to know who the best modeler is you aaron or justin geis if, or you can throw someone out there that you think is better than all of them. I, I'll just speak for myself. I'm I'm the worst of the three. Justin <laughs> would bury me. <laughs> Justin guys would ever, bury me. I'm I don't sure think of I've, it. Like watched him. I've only watched like his his reviews of stuff or his him his like introducing you to plugins and stuff. I haven't actually watched him model. I, he, and and I haven't either. And I mean, maybe there's a little bit of well, what are you asking somebody to model? Uh, I'm I'm just gonna go out there and say I think Justin probably uses SketchUp for real projects more frequently, and that that there's a lot to be said there. That probably helps. I make less and less real projects than I used to. Yeah, I will also own up that the like. There's not many, but the few times I have thought, oh, yeah, I can model faster or better than somebody, and I've actually gone head to head, I lose. So, <laughs> just toning up. It's probably because you just don't usually have your Wacom tablet uh, <laughs> whenever you're in these situations. Well, so, to your point, just a moment ago about how you have to relearn something every time. A year ago, not it wasn't a year ago, but if you look back in our history of, we, we did a thing where Aaron's modeled lightsabers before, but I modeled lightsabers back in the summer last year or something. And one of the things I did that I'm gonna do here is, is model the, the kyber crystal. And I had to go back and look at how I did it to remember how to do this 
that's why I don't think I'm the best because I just don't do this. Like there's, you, you forget. I forget. But yeah. I don't even remember what we're talking about. So here's what we're talking about. We need to make some. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I'm we need you. to. We need to make some rocks that we can use for this. And so we're just going to start with kind of something like this. And we could do, <clears throat> we could do something, right, where we right click these native tools, or we could use solid tools to intersect geometry. Um, and start to carve away the pieces of this and and uh, make it kind of a more interesting I'm going to reverse this more interesting rock but what I found when doing it back then is there's another method that I think works a little faster it does use artisan which is a paid plugin so um, if you don't have artisan Apologies, again, there, you totally can do this with the native tools. This, like many plugins, just makes it faster. But this knife tool here, if I click on this, what this does is I can just draw a line and it cuts through any geometry that that passes through. So if we look at that, it has cut through that geometry. And now I can select and delete this and just, um, fill that back in. And so what, that's what we're going to do to sort of accelerate this process is use that knife tool to cut through our piece and start making just random angles. Now another piece here, so I've already mapped this, but I am in 2022 and one of the things we did was add this search bar. Um, I believe the shortcut is shift space. So if I search for knife, it also brings it up. That's really nice. In the web version of SketchUp, you can actually change the shortcut um, right here. Th that's not implemented yet on the desktop version, but this is a great start. I did create a keyboard shortcut. So for me, I think it's Shift K. Yeah. And the other thing I did to make this faster is from this angle, it's a little hard to select just the right geometry, but another new feature of 2022 is this lasso selection. So I created another keyboard shortcut. For me, it's control space, <clears throat> and I can do this. From the view I'm in, and then strip back to like, okay, and let's cut this off and go back to delete let's go up here that icon's just cracking me up i'll be honest how big they are or just how do no you no mean? just the fact that it's a, a knife oh <laughs> true right like no i, I appreciate <laughs> the bigness the bigness is good the bigness technical term yeah So we start to get kind of uh, this random rock and I'm going to take the point off of that thing. But otherwise, this might be uh, one that we can use. So at some point, like after you're done with that, then you can start to use scale to make them longer or fatter or whatever. And is that, yeah. is that kind of the plan? A little bit, yeah. I think, I, I imagine it depends on kind of your personal, if, you, if you're just spending an evening kind of rocking out to some music you like and, and you want to make a library of, of different rocks that really have some differences, that's great. We're we're not gonna. Yeah, I don't. I don't want to drag everybody through that. This we're not just gonna make rocks for the next two hours. Although, I, again, I would do that. <laughs> I I don't know. Yeah, thank, I would totally you do that. Threat, but I believe you. Yeah, 
I, I, I would do that. I just don't want to drag everybody through that. Uh, so yes, we'll make a few of these and then we'll use the scale tools to kind of give ourselves some. Well, Victor, Victor said that there's actually a free plugin that does something, does, does some similar cutting like that called Zorro. Zorro. Yeah. I don't remember that, but that's a great reference. So check Zorro, that Zorro out. Zorro SketchUp Blade. Let's see. I, uh, Mr. Sargent's in the audience. He's he's doing his best to uh, to heckle. Hey, a little bit. That guy, man, that, that guy. guy. Oh, there we go. So there's a Zorro two. I see slicer models with Zorro two. Hey, wouldn't you know? Justin Geis has done a uh, an extension of the week video on it. So there you go. That's why I am not trying to say I could I could. <laughs> I do not. There was a time when you were on just all over all of that stuff. I remember. <laughs> um, let's do one more and we'll get some iterations. Um, um, I, that Zero tool, tool may be do, able to do this as well. I like, I, I've been cutting all the way through. You don't have to. I can just go like this. If I want to create sort of some, you know, interesting pieces, uh, cracks in the rock, basically. Nice. So that is an option too. Right. That's fine. And another thing that I think, again, I, I'm not a. I'm not an expert, obviously, on you know whatever constitutes low poly or this, but the look of it sometimes isn't as jagged edges as this. It's simplified surfaces. But if we take our rock here and then use a uh, round corner or something and give it just a bit of a chamfer on the edges, that might give us the look that we actually want. So I'm gonna try that. If you have a lot of tiny, if you've used round corner, you know that it, you know, we'll probably get some error messages as we go through this, but uh, we're going to see what we get. Um, uh, three, based on this size, let's see if we can get away with 0.5. Let's try that. Okay. Cool. I'm going to do that to these guys as well. Lenny likened these to peeled potatoes. Very appropriately so. <laughs> yeah. I think that's what they always look like to me. I feel like there's probably some people out there that do not have faceted potatoes afterwards, but mine are always look like little crystals. Cloudy, <laughs> really, really cl cl cloudy crystals. I feel like you need to need to speed up your your rock building because the shingles the shingles and the bricks and the and the power uh, are gonna kick your trash you're not wrong about that so <laughs> <laughs> you're not wrong so it's I appreciate... funny how much extra work goes into being low poly it's right like it, it's a style but that doesn't mean it's it, it, less work necessarily um Um, so, ah. um, have, have you saved recently? seems like when you're using extensions, saving is always a, you know, good thing. Thank you, my friends out there. I'll tell you that I saved this model before we started because of that. I am scared <laughs> we're going to, we're going to lose some, I'm scared we're going to lose this model a time or two. We'll see. So. I haven't purposefully saved, but I certainly have autosave uh, going on. Well, it's always good to be 
uh, a good example to everyone following along at home. I hope everybody is following along at home. Um, right? Like, uh, how's everybody doing out there? <laughs> All right. That's a good question. This Andy's wanting to wanting wanting to off. see this model on the forum. Um, I, absolutely. I forget. I forget to share some of these, but by all means, you know, we, we, we mean to share them. Okay. So, uh, let's... Okay, I think I found it. I think I found it. Oh, shoo! Thanks, everybody. Jody got it. We're good. Have a good day. What'd you find? Okay. I'm sticking it on. I'll stick it up there right now. What? What is it? I'm not putting the image. I'm putting a link to where I got it because I don't want to steal from Art Station. Okay. Got that. Let's do this one. Yes. There, we got our error and we got some messy geometry. Nice. Oh, there's Probably. a whole bunch more. You actually go to, we actually go to uh, Art Station. They like went through and put all kinds of materials and fun bits on this too. Oh, they did, which we're clearly not going to do. Yeah, that's fine. This piece, I think, is giving us some the, the problems and so rather than resolve it I'm just going to get rid of it and uh, and then we'll go mm. as you say awesome. to those tiles What's that? Nothing. I was just thinking that I wanted to have some mashed potatoes now. Ooh. Lumpy. Lumpy mashed potatoes. <laughs> so how did you come by this uh, this art style? Or did you already have an idea of what this stuff looked like and then you just happen to see this as a good Dang example, it. a good starting point? Um, I... I I mean, there's a lot of games and, and maybe even indie games that use a style like this. I like the simplicity of it. Um, I'm going to see if we can resolve this corner so we can have a little bit. All right, let's get rid of the interior geometry. I don't know. But it, it's just one of the three D styles out there. I did. That's fine. That's. I'll, I'll allow it. Well, um, I, I do like it as one of the things that I I think that is not natively sort of in SketchUp's wheelhouse. So it's one of those things that's fun to, uh, like we we're saying from the beginning, try and figure mm -hmm. out. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, everybody, yes, we're we're here. we're done with the rocks. I promise. I, I won't <laughs> I won't do any more. A lot of their rocks were very pokey and jaggedy. I like how yours is a little a little friendlier. If you fall on it, it'll probably just kind of bruise you. It won't gash you or anything like that. So. Yeah, I I like to think of you know rock pillows and stuff. What's all these jaggy rocks? <laughs> what were you saying before that? Or nothing. Nothing of import. These are going to be good rocks. I look forward to uh, rocking out, as as I just now got the pun when you made that comment earlier. There we go. That see, there should be a timer. Not <laughs> for how long. Not, like yeah, to get a pun. It's not the it's not the save timer. It's the Jody pun not timer. Not getting a pun. Yeah. yeah, that's fair. It's a worthy timer, in my opinion. <laughs> 
Okay, so I, I mean, I'm I'm curious again. This is just the way that I thought to do these. I really am curious to see if if anyone has different ideas or even a different variation of this that you think would be a different way to make rocks. Yeah, or this type of of object. Yeah. Well, I'll I'll start looking around on on YouTube and see if someone else has made a good video for it. Well, that that's a good point. Um, if you if you go in, I love to look at how people do stuff in other software. Again, that's not necessarily the SketchUp paradigm, because you can get great ideas, right? So, again, that the uh, Blender is a great one. Go watch how people do stuff in Blender and be like. They have tools that are either extensions or not native. So. Does Blender have extensions like that? Or is it, is when you're in Blender, is it just kind of all, all or nothing? You're oh, blending well, or you're not blending? It's got native subdivision modeling and native tools for working with vertices the way that Artisan and SubD and Vertex Editor do, but that's the native SketchUp you know, that natively you're not going to see quite the same. Yeah. So what they need is like a extensions that let them tur try and turn Blender into SketchUp. Since that's <laughs> what all these extensions are turning SketchUp into Blender. Are you going to do that little draped rope with with um with fabric whatever that's supposed to be dirty um, clothes hanging from it. we'll remind everybody sort of what our inspiration is here so maybe but honestly if if we keep this going through this month because we're not going to get this done today we're not going to get this far but depending on aaron aaron can dump this model or or try and build something different or entourage or whatever he wants to but um, yeah, maybe if I, uh, if we get to it, you know, over the next few weeks, there are ways we could we could do that. So again, this is sort of the, our inspiration. That's very inspiring, for sure. I should. You know I'm going to curse you now because we, we often joke about this, that as soon as I open up, one of us opens up ArtStation, you just kind of start browsing stuff and you all of a sudden lose track of what you're actually supposed to be doing. It's a danger. Yeah. <laughs> I never, I, I just grouped these. I never made any of them components. And even though, so I'm going to make them components now just sake of doing that. Yeah. Um, anyway, I think some of these, you know, we can place later depending on the final composition we want. And if, if this is meant to be a single image or one or two images, then then we'll do the things, you know, where you, we wouldn't build out the backside or we wouldn't build out some of that those pieces um, but we'll see how that goes again I, yeah, Bill, it's what's that so Bill, Bill Bill had a good comment was I mean it's probably not probably not going to shift it would it would be too much of a, a mental pivot but he was saying it'd be nice to take any of the individual outs indiv individual elements out and work on how to model them like have more time committed to just the the tower or just the, the shack yeah um that's a great suggestion so okay we, we've got far enough and that's a good pivot i have some ideas i want to explore in um like if, if we look at this again the the things that to me seem challenging on this one is we could create the base of the walls of the shack 
pretty straightforward. There are examples where they're like really at different angles and you really make it cartoony. This one looks a little little straighter. Uh, certainly we could make it so. But the, the, the tiles and the bricks, that, that to me is, is, uh, is one of the challenges that, that we can say, okay, how are we gonna do that? And not only how are we gonna do that, but how are we gonna do that efficiently since we only have two hours in today? So let's see if we can do that. No promises, but we're gonna try. Um, and then it, <clears throat> some of the rest of this, but let's see here, let's see here. So, Jody, tiles or bricks or, or um, roof or uh, tower first? Which one? Roof or tower first? Big roof. Roof? roof? Okay. Roof. So, because it's cartoony, we're going to make kind of thick cartoony tiles. I haven't tried this before. I just have an idea of how to do it. Let's see if it works. If it doesn't, then let's watch me fail. <laughs> All right. So we're gonna, the, the idea I have for this is we're gonna take this, um, again, I really would be interested if people have different different ideas. We're going to use a simple array and we're going to create the base of the tiles. But then we need to create the variation. So we're going to create a few tiles that are different components and then we're going to use tools uh, and I'll give credit to Eric who you called out a little while ago to our, our Eric Sargent who's part of our team for giving me the, the idea on randomizing components and swapping components out. So I saw him do this, and that's where the idea came from that I'm going to try. Um, but we, we can start with one. Now, a lot of times when you're moving in SketchUp, you have an idea, you try it, and then you find out later, oh, it would have been better if I set it up a little differently. That could be the case here. The one thing I'm going to do is change our axis of our, the component which hopefully will hopefully will will be correct. I'm not I'm not 100% sure that this will be the best, but I want to change this axis so it's centered maybe even on the whole thing. So let's take um, change the axis. And let's put the axis right in the center. The rest of it can be the same. Let's just see if that works, uh, I hope it does. I'll, cl I'll cross my fingers now. Thank you. I'll start holding. I'll start start holding my breath. Okay. Um, I'm not sure when to tell you to release it, but you hold it real good. If you hear thump, it's not me. It's my dog. Oh. <laughs> I'm just kidding. My dog is asleep. <laughs> it's nap time. All right, so this may be a little too big and chunky, but it, you know, it's something like like that maybe. In the image, they're actually smaller than this, but let's stick to this size for our sanity and purposes. So, I'm mostly curious to see how you how you make this happen with your your slight curvy. Uh, roof line well uh, <clears throat> and 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 that question applies to the taper of the lighthouse too yeah yeah that'll be fun too I feel like you should be starting at the bottom like with, like you do when you're really making real shingles um, you might be right I've never done this well, it'd be a lot easier to prop the bottom up so that it fits on top of those as it works its way up. Oh, I see what you're saying. That's a good idea. That's a good idea. Why don't we bring them down? Let's try it. 
Let's try it, Jody. Let's what's go what's the worst that could happen? I don't know. It's, it's just a model that's imaginary. All right, so like that, and then we're going to... So, Abulash did ask a question. No, you're doing it backwards. No. No. Oh, I am doing it backwards. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, thank you for stopping All me there. All of your race is going to go underneath the one beneath it. Uh, oh, okay. Maybe I should. Maybe I won't ask this question because maybe I don't want to distract you while you're uh, while you're working out the bits. I'm going to group this temporarily and then we'll. But no, what's the question? Um, how many how many polygons SketchUp can handle before it starts to lag? Oh. Which I, which I always have a hard time, I don't know, I, I get caught up on the word polygons because it's not really a, a big sketchy thing. But then, of course, Eric said he worked on a model with 32 million polygons, which then all of a sudden made me wrong. Or maybe okay. I'm wrong. Maybe so wrong. You, you know this as well as I do. You can talk to the variables, which are how well you model. Like, if you display all of them all of the time, it's gonna it's gonna start sucking, but there's techniques and management techniques to say I'm not gonna display all the polygons all the time. I can have a really large model. I'm just not going to. Um, you only really want to see what you're actively working on. Yeah, and of course there's computer speed and all of these things. It is not like a um, mud box. Or um, what's the other one that deals with just millions and millions of polygons and they do super high uh, creature and people mesh in it? Um, what am I trying to think of? I know Aaron's I know. out there. He knows exactly what it is. Well, so I know that he is in the audience, so let's go ahead and wait for him. I'll, just, I'll start holding my breath again and tell you. Well, somebody else will be able to, anyway, that very high poly modeler and it actively you can actively manipulate millions of polys in the moment i mean but that's just a completely different modeler it's a different paradigm yeah i'm um i'm inclined in, in, inclined to agree with artisan tony about the thickness of your shingles but i don't want to be i don't want to be critical i think you're doing great uh, that they're too much, or that they're not enough. They're know. too thick. They are very thick. Yes, they they're are ridiculously thick. They certainly are. You run the risk of them just breaking through the roof. Um. I appreciate it. I genuinely welcome the feedback. Um. Not going to change it. <laughs> I'm going to. I'm going It'll to. It'll also be interesting to see how you're, as you go, like how you're going to randomize the, make them look a little randomer. Yeah, that's that's where we're headed. As Lenny also points out that they should be staggered. Should they should indeed. Teams. So, a little bit of that we'll fix right now, and a little bit of that we'll fix later. So, again... Keep in mind, especially for those of us who love the the way that SketchUp, we can line things up and the precision and the, we're not trying to be. So, and that's part of the, the thickness is to make this cartoony. But you know what? If it's too thick, they are components, we can come back and we can, we can change that. Um, certainly, again, if you compare our, our reference model uh, they're not that this big either, so we'll see. We'll see. We'll see what happens. We'll see how they look. You you, you start a little fat. That way you can uh, you can shrink and and it doesn't mess it up too much. Yeah. Story of my life. Um, this will definitely help from some variation. This will help from some variation placement. But so let's let's get where we're gonna go to. And we're just going to mirror this to the other side when we're done. So here we go. Let's make some copies of this. 
And just to, just, I'm listening. We'll make these a little thinner right now. How about that? <laughs> hey, this is a, a perfect chance to show off the beauty of components. A little, little bit thinner. <laughs> Okay, so we need to make each of these unique. They should, though, have the same. It's important that each one retains that axis that we started with, but that one will make it unique, make it unique. Okay, and now, uh, again, with more time, I, I think it would be nice to Um, put, a, put you know, make a few more variations of these and make them kind of a little more interesting than we're going to do so. But we're going to run out of time if we let my, you know, my weird sense of perfectionism run wild. So we're just going to see what Your we can perfection, do. Trying to make things per perfect, perfectly imperfect. Uh huh. It's weird, right? To be like, what what sense of perfectionism on a model that we're <laughs> deliberately trying to? Because <laughs> anytime you're trying to manually manipulate something to look just right, it's gonna you're gonna run into perfection and perfectionism <laughs> messing with you. Yeah. Sven Sven asked if we could just be using the knife again. We could, um, but um, uh, yeah, simple answer, yes. Because these are flat, I think just general push-pull will be our friend here. Um, but once we they're not flat, then yeah, we might have to start tweaking some more. Um, he, here's the thing. If you're not going to take the time to like really start tweaking individual tiles, I don't want to make any one of these tiles really stand out. Because we're going to distribute them across the roof and we want to create a general sense that we've created that they're all unique, but they're not. So we want to be careful that that you know one of these doesn't look like this, right? That will stand out. Yeah, anything too egregious. Yeah. It would be. Uh, so Abilash was asking if you could do this with dynamic components, which, I mean, I would say you certainly could, and have it doing randomness on there. But that's a completely different skill set that's that's all sudden turning sketch into programming um there's also the aspect of you know could one do it with dynamic components yes could i do it with dynamic no <laughs> i don't i i don't do dynamic components it, it could be done by yeah. someone else somebody smarter yes by all means <laughs> Absolutely. Now I gotta go over and check in on this. Andy just posted pictures of his poultry processing plant that he's currently working on for work. His current oh. project. Nice. It's always interesting to see like warehouse <clears throat> warehouse scaled models like that. Yeah. <clears throat> Okay, so to do the next thing we're gonna do, I wanna make sure I can't select the other stuff. So I'm gonna, let's see, I'm gonna take our reference ground plane, building, tower. I'm gonna group these together and lock those. And I'm gonna lock, I'll group the rocks together so I can lock those. I do not wanna be able to select them. Because as soon as you're as soon as you're able, you will do so on the, the next drag select you do. Yes. So I'm going to ungroup these in a moment. What I want to be able to do, there's a couple ways we could try this. Um, there's a tool. I believe this is. Um, we're going to use. Yeah, so it's Christina Inneroth. Um, randomized components. I think this is the one we're going to use. And what we're going to do, we're going to select all of them. So I've selected all of our original component and all of the new ones. And then go and say randomized components. 
Oh, it selected the rocks too. That's whack. Okay. Those are supposed to be locked. Um, let's try that again. Randomized components. So, that's the first thing we get, is we get sort of this a mix of, now we have a, a lot more, you know, variation going on than we had before. It doesn't look like a lot, but it, but you can see that they're not all the same. So that's that's one thing. And again, if um, if we took the time, we'd, we'd kind of get some more interesting if we had more pieces to randomize in here. So you can get the idea of what we're doing. I think the other thing we'll do, oh, well, see, I didn't, did I not? What'd you do? Oh, I didn't make all of these unique. Oh, that would explain why some of them look almost identical. Yeah, I mean, we just, we don't have that many variations. Actually, we probably should make a little more size variation in this. So let's make this a little fatter. Let's make this one a little thinner. This one a little wider and thinner. Um, but I hope that, uh, you know, the, again, this, this idea of this, I hope makes sense that, and, and I have said several times, please shout out suggestions or ideas on how you might, how you might tackle this kind of problem because, or challenges, you know, that is one of the, uh, one of the beauties of SketchUp is there is more than one way to skin a proverbial lighthouse. Indeed. So let's try that again. Let's see if we select this, get rid of these, and randomize. Ah, I mean, just that little bit of tweak, to me at least, looks better. Now, there's overlap that's, you know, causing some visual in, you know, differences, but that definitely looks a lot more random. Now, another thing that we can do. So if we take this and then go again to an extension, Chris Fulmer has the scale and rotate. And there's a couple ways that, that he does this. This is one of the reasons why I, I thought at the beginning it might be good to put the axis in the center, but it, it, it may not be necessary, but um, we can scale about the axis. We can scale about the center, which we kind of did so I don't know, maybe it made sense to do that, but maybe it's not, not that important. This is one of those plugins that I don't use that often, so I usually have to experiment with it. Um, you know, so if, if we just leave the default settings and let's say, you know, 0.5 minimum rotation and two maximum rotation about the axis, let's just see what happens. <laughs> see, it looks... I mean, it looks a little more in line. I mean, if you could have, if you could have, the top edge all always match up, and, and then you could even kind of do that just with the top bit. And maybe, maybe, changing the axis on all of these to the top edge, and then it would all be based off of there, and and make the, yeah. you know. So yeah, in our case, can you tweak? Can you have it tweak the thickness and thinness as well? Yes, uh, it, which make it was doing, but. You know, depending on how you want to do that. I mean, I imagine, so, you know, we could try the uniform, we could try randomly, and, and we can play with the scale and not the rotation, or we could play with the rotation and not the scale, so kind of do it in a couple steps to get what we wanted. Um, I think what, what we'll do is we'll just, rather than the minimum maximum scale being 0.5, which I think is like 0.5 of the original, Let's dial this back so that this is not so extreme. So the minimum scale is going to be 0.2 and the max will be like 1.2. And same here, rotation 0.1 and 0.3. Uh, 
uh, about the axis should be fine or about the center one of those probably similar oh yeah that's not what we want <laughs> that, that's, that's something but not maybe maybe if you were doing a pathway of rocks up to our cabin maybe that maybe mm -hmm. this is so but okay yeah, I, don't, I don't think i've seen this this extension before this is a fun one this is fun it's often used like you, you do a row of trees and then you can make the trees even if they're all the same component look a little bit differently because you can change the scale and, and size of them the height let's try this again i thought i'm not going to rotate uh, i'm going to try to keep the same settings but rotate about the axis let's see uh rotate randomly the minimum scale oh i may have messed it up here minimum scale oh. let's make 0.9 max scale 1.1 1 .1. so we're not getting a lot of scale different minimum rotation maximum rotation well we can make the minimum zero I'm sorry for dragging everybody through our experiments but okay let's see okay that's better so Let's not drag this out any farther. I think the idea is there. Um, one last bit that let's do, kind of like the rocks. Let's just come in. To, see, I I forgot to make that unique again. <laughs> Jeez, on, on, Arch. <laughs> Okay, uh, let's do this and just see what happens if we, uh, this offset's gonna be smaller, 0.2 let's say, maybe 0.3. How much can we get away with? Let's try that. Uh, all right let's run down on the line and try this yeah and do it i is this your, is this your free plugin i thought i made these all unique i clearly didn't what is mm. <laughs> This this um, this there's two versions of this. One's free and one's paid. Um, the round, okay. what is it? Round corner. Somebody out there will know better than I. The round corner, the original version that Fredo made, uh, is still available and it is free. He he rewrote it with kind of a different algorithm. I think it's my understanding that that resolves. Um, corners in a in a different way and often better way. I think this is just the free version that I'm using. Okay. Um, and you can see obviously that there's some messy stuff, but we're just going to pretend it's not there by going into soft and smooth and just. Lenny said he does remember you making them all you need, so. Maybe there's some fun little bit of wonkiness in that extension. I thought I did, but yeah, that's, that's funny, right? I'm going to get rid of these. I'm just going to hide them. Carson said the paid one is Frito Corner. Frito, Frito Corner. Corner. Thank you. Sure. Um, so let's see what we look like now. I'm happy enough with that let's not drag it out but okay so um uh, I'm group that
Whoa. I did not scale that correctly. <laughs> yeah, something looks weird about that. <laughs> <laughs> I was not paying so attention and I went way past I mean obviously you're more inclined to chit and chat while you're doing your drawing because people are watching you but I find that I also have every bit as much to say when it's just me and the screen oh you mean talking my way back talking to your wait talking to yourself talking to myself to yeah, laughing at laughing when I do something silly and oh. all those things. It's always fun to just listen to someone sort of start muttering to themselves and <laughs> as they're as they're focused. Well, I'll tell you, I, I just for myself, but I I suspect there's a few people out there. I cuss more <laughs> when it's just myself. Oh, uh, at the stuff that like yeah, like if all of the that. Um, make unique stuff hadn't been working i'd been like what the <laughs> yeah happening? exactly it, it may have been slightly more uh pg-13 or r <laughs> um so this this uh top beam will make it slightly curved and that's going to be down here too. Then we're going to then we're going to try to do the tower. Um, actually, the bottom is going to be less curved than that, but just just a little bit. Did I get a little bit? Yeah. I can't push pull that anymore, but I can move it, and then the native tools. I could do something like scale. Now this is gonna mess this up a lot, like from the center. But it's not so many pieces that we can also come in here and do um, Aaron's favorite piece, which is a little bit of stitching, right? Everybody loves stitching. Um, I'm. I'm going to come back. I will do that if that's where this goes. But I want to try one other tool that we're going to be using next anyway. So if I look at our group, I'm going to group this. And then let's try Fredo's Fredo scale. So it's this one. Um, I don't use this that often, but I think what we want is box tapering. And so if we grab um, this, yeah, and sort of taper that from the bottom, there we go. Boom, done. So again, we if, if we look at the hidden geometry, oh, it actually does it, it resolves it differently. So yeah, it, that's nice. That's pretty but, good to me. Yeah, Sorry, that's just, that's what we were trying to get water. Um, I'm going to see how well we can chamfer those edges. We're going to make this one maybe a little bigger if we can get away with it. Sweet, that worked the first time, like I hoped. Okay. So, the tricky thing with stuff like this is it's hard to look at this and then and not be architecturally critical. Like I can be like, you know, that's not how shingles. That's not how shingles work, man. We talk about same man. Time, but at the same time, it's it's a it's a game. It's, it's like a cartoon. <laughs> Maybe in this world, all the rain is chubby. <clears throat> I. I, I do think with more time, I think it would be worth taking five or 10 minutes and going in and start just, you know, moving some of these individually and tweaking and, and, and there's still a sense of kind of chaos uniformity to this. I don't, that doesn't make sense, but I, I don't know how. 
I want this to be a little more variation and we could keep tweaking that. We could, uh, we could dial that in. I just, not today. But I don't think that's the point you were making, Jody. You're just saying that's not how shingles work. <laughs> right. Well, because a comment was made that you know they should be staggered 50 50 percent through each one so that there's not any any room for gaps or anything like that. <laughs> I, now, I I'm, I'm going to bet that the that the your source image there was done. What like we're already we're only an hour and ten minutes into this whole process and thirty minutes of that was making rocks so. <laughs> I would bet. I bet this could be a day. You could make a day, day-long project out of this. Well, let let's. So, partially, what we're going to do here is we're that box scale. Let's introduce another one. Just as a kind of let's see if we can make one tweak that will help that little bit. That that way that they're they're not overlapping quite as well as we'd hope. There's an extension that we're going to use that instead of randomized components is randomized selection. So if we click random selection here, we can dial this down and it's gonna select just some random bit of these and we can hit shuffle. So let's do that and then I'm going to come in and let's, you know, move these a little bit and I'll say, let's say three inches. And then this is still going so we can do that. Let's move these that way, two inches or three inches or five inches. And let's dial that shuffle into something else. Move these up by one inch in you know, so again, th this idea, I, I hope the idea is, is there that again, we can use some of these tools to randomize. And again, so that creates some obvious gaps. And if that, if you wanted to remedy that, then we could remedy the few gaps individually. Be like, okay, well, this one's this way and this one we're going to scale and this one will just scale. Right. So again, I don't want to drag everybody through that, that we're, we're trying to introduce ideas, ways to approach this, again, recognizing that we can't complete this model in the time frame given, but I don't know. Does that make sense? I hope that's helpful. Makes sense to me. So, and when you compare your shingles to what's in the source model, those are not staggered at all. So you're okay. I had thought that they were, but they'll, Bill confirmed. No, they're they're pretty much just like corn kernels. They they are at least from the top. They have more variation in the the length and mm -hmm. and there's like missing tiles and they get longer down here. There's some really cool stuff happening, but um, again, that's where sort of your individual personal tastes. If you wanted to come in here. By all means, I, I, I'm not, I'm not happy. Like it, this wouldn't be the final. I do think it, it needs some like individual tweaking to, but, the, but, but we've got a good start. I hope we've got a good yeah, start. You're good. You don't have to explain any further because you need to start making some, some, some bricks. Okay. So my, my idea for this is, is a similar thing where I want to see if we can create blocks that are components, but this time the challenge will be we need to copy them vertically, taper them, and then randomize them. And we've introduced now, the tools that we're going to use you, to do this. Could you wait and taper it at the very end? So do the whole thing like a normal cylinder and at the end taper it and then that will have some effect of, you know, the scaling behavior you get as well. Yes. I and and this is one of those things where honestly if you if you were to do this multiple times and want to kind of perfect this method, you should experiment with when you do that. Because there might be advantages for doing it a certain sequence that I'm not taking into account. 
Well, so the answer is yes, we'll, you we'll could. Learn, we'll learn together yeah. which one's the good way, right? Yeah. So Bill wants to know if you find it quicker to resize a circle diameter with the scale face or move on the cardinals. Uh, it probably depends. Because this is just a group and because I don't care, uh, I, I'm doing this. What Bill is referring to is if you use the move tool, you if you see here how this is, the whole circle is highlighted blue, you can find points where it's not, and that is what is re he's referring to as a cardinal point, and you just grab that point and you can resize a circle. Because we haven't changed anything, I could also select this, go to the entity info, and resize the circle. So lots of different ways. Um, I couldn't tell you when I use one or the other necessarily. <laughs> See previous comment about how you always end up mucking it up with your own your own preferences <laughs> earlier. Yeah. All right. So I think let me use the polygon tool and let's just let's just go with twelve. We need to create some base blocks to work from. And so, actually, I am, oops, I'm going to delete that polygon I just made and draw it again. And uh, polygon, you can do this with polygons, not with circles, but if you look down here in the option, <clears throat> uh, it can be um, circumscribed or uh, inscribed. Meaning that the, when you enter dimensions for this, if I tap option, you'll see that the, maybe if I make this bigger, it'll be more obvious. It changes, for what I want right now, it changes whether I'm pulling on a flat edge of that polygon or a point, which is, like say, um, inscribed or circumscribed as far as the, the actual radius, which would be different. I'm changing it to this because I wanna have one of these blocks to be on the axis like this. So if I offset that, the distance probably doesn't matter so much. We're just gonna have some big blocky brick. And then I'm gonna do this. And this is gonna require that we know the center here. So I'm gonna create a reference for myself. That point is the center of everything we're doing. I better group that. Now I'm gonna create a circle. I change the the number of segments. Actually, I just I need some sort of reference. It doesn't have to be exact. I want to create a kind of a curve on this block rather than a pure flat face. But I don't want a full 12 segments. Um, so let's make this arc, let's say, five or six, seven. Let's just say five. And it's going to be something like that. This is going to be the block. And looks good. Okay, yeah. A little too crisp. A little too crisp, but we'll we'll get there. Uh, let's make this component. Um, Again, with the, it might make sense to be deliberate about where we put the axis. This time, I'll try not to. Uh, we'll see what we can do. I won't. I won't do that right now, I, and we'll see if we get away with it. But I look forward. I look, look forward to finding out if we get away with it. <laughs> I do too. Okay, so we've got that. Let's take one of our our pieces over here. Now I did try a quick version of this. I, I think some of it will work, but again, we're, um, 
chart in some a little bit of unter a little bit of uh, risky territory here. In fact, I better save. Let's just grab all this minus this. That's easier. That, and then we'll rotate this. Say 15. Make another copy. Rotate it another 15. <laughs> Which did the same thing. Uh, let's dial that back and make it 10 and 10 actually. So that we're. Uh, obviously, we could alternate each one, and maybe that's the style. I, I'm just seeing if this will work. We rotated the original one 30 degrees, so if we do 10 on this one and 10 on the next one, then we'll be able to get back to where we were. Ten. All right. Everything. Everything makes sense so far, Jody. As much as I expect it ever will. <laughs> <laughs> That's so, a loaded, that was a loaded question. So I had to <laughs> give a loaded answer. Yoo-hoo! Nice. Looks identical. Looks just like it. Yeah. All right. Let's dial this back. So here's where you brought up earlier, Jody. Um, we could at this point, do what we did down here. That, that's what we're going to do is we, we want to make these, we want to make some random, uh, unique components that we can randomize through here and try to make it look like we have variation and that these aren't all the same, right? I, I think your suggestion about when to taper it made sense. I, I'm going to taper it right now only because, again, I, I did try this once before and I ran into this issue, so I want to show how we can fix it. Because what happens, let's say we grab all of these, minus you, and I'm going to group them temporarily, and then we're going to use, again, this um, Fredo 6 scale tool and we'll use box tapering um, and that will allow us let me this is one of those cases where I might jump to the mouse but that will allow us to hopefully grab the right uh, piece up here and scale this and taper all of these together, right? So, you see what we're doing. And straight away, like, I, just that's pretty cool. I love that we can do that. And so if we had, if we had done the work before and randomize these and, and then we might be done right now. But I do want to point out that what this did is these were all components and they are not anymore. We, each of these is now broken separately. It's unique. And so because of that... We'll spend the next two hours going through and individually randomizing. Exactly. <laughs> so. it's, like, it's like stitching, but more painful. <laughs> Um, but here's what we can we, we here's what we can do. So if you if you did this and you ran into that and you're like oh no, you know, um, I don't want to keep selecting our little piece here, but I want to make sure we preserve it. So I'm going to just move it way down here. What we can do is we can take these groups and link them back to components, and so. Um, it, it, I, have to, I have to remember how I did this. I'm sorry. That's fine. 
See, the fact that it happens in the middle of a session at least gives me some some hope. Because I definitely forget how I did things between sessions. Um, component replacer, I think, is what's going to save us here. Is that right? Okay, we're gonna we're okay. We're gonna we're gonna do a little bit of uh, hopefully. I, component replacer, I think, is going to replace you know one component with another, but maintain its its scale and size. Let's find out. So we should be able to retain all of this if we select these. Go to component replacer. I hope this is right. And then select the thing we want to replace it with. This is still a component. Click on it. And now if we do a quick test, if we look at this, ah, uh, see, perfect. It worked. Nice. So we were I able do. to do it. Okay, good. Phew. <laughs> I do love being a uh, cleverly used extension. Um, so that, that goes back to your point, Jody, about like, oh, when do we taper this? We might taper it at the end. It would still break our components. Whereas in this case, we tapered it at the beginning, then we had to relink the components, but now we're gonna do that, that piece where we randomize them and we still have the benefit of components. Whereas I think if we did it the other way and we tapered it at the end, we would lose all the work we did and, and we wouldn't be able to, you know, it would be much more work to relink components at that point because now we have just a whole mess of potentially random pieces. At least that, that's my thinking. I don't know if, you know, who knows how much sense it makes. Well, Let's, the, the towers, at least in their model, is not quite as random feeling as the, as the roof anyway. Yeah. Okay. Making this unique. Making this unique. Unique. <laughs> and we're just going to create some variation here. So let me um, make some of these. Uh, let's use tools on surface here. I, I pull these out and then it just starts getting be random over here. I think this is tools on surface, is it? And uh, we'll use tools on surface and joint push pull or something like that. And, and you know, as always, we could do some of, this is so simple. We could do some of this natively. We could, we could just, you know, I'll just show one example. That's not what I wanted. I don't know. I don't know if anybody actually cares. Um, to that, I care. Do you? Oh, thanks, Jody. I don't know how much people care when you show um, uh, native a native tool, and then you show uh, an extension that's like, but this is much much faster. Um, I, there's something about my wiring that I, I want to be like, oh, but just you know. You can do this natively. You can do it that way. And uh, and I I feel like oh no, I have to show that it's possible if you know a little more time consuming or painful. And then I, I'm like, do do people even care? Just just show the I know extension I'm method. Yeah, I'm I'm a fan of seeing both because then it can also help me decide if it's worth installing or purchasing, as the case may be. Well, and, and you immediately out there should be saying, yes, but this was a very simplistic example. If there were a lot of segments, then it gets harder to do the native example. Now, where is offset on this, this one? So now I'll just use, um, Fredo's offset to, uh, 
you know, make this offset that and, and that just makes it faster. And so let's uh, let's randomize a few of these. Split this one down the middle and do the same. Um, I hope everybody has shortcuts for showing hidden edges. I There's no default shortcut for it that I know of, but I just find that to be immensely helpful to be able to toggle that on and off. I do not. I do not have a shortcut for it. Maybe Mr. I should. Mr. Gates. I'm going to do all, all of my modeling on the uh, the iPad beta. <laughs> You're just a rebel. Yeah, I don't. I still I suck worse at iPad beta or the iPad version than I do the uh, desktop version. But someday, someday I'll be better, just like you. I I, I will be better someday too. You're right. Wait, no, that's that's not what I meant. That's exactly what you meant. Although I'm glad to hear that you will be better someday. I I hope so. Better mentally? Better... Uh, yeah. you, can you clarify? <laughs> Why not both? Why not both? Um, okay, okay. I think we're about here. Have you saved lately? Oh, yeah. I totally just did it. Okay, good. Uh, Keggy is wondering if you could have used the new freehand tool to create the irregular faces instead of the square ones. It yeah. takes some getting used to freehand tool being amazing instead of just being useful. A tool that was was there but nobody uses it. Yeah, that's definitely true about that. Um, okay, let's see how let's see how this goes. Um, we've got these, we've got some different, so we're going to select all of them, the ones we want to replace and this, and we're going to go up and say randomize components. And uh, it looks pretty random. Looks pretty random. Looks that, randomer than the, the tiles turned out, the roof, yeah. roof tiles, shingles. That is not unsatisfactory. There you go. And uh, learn something new here today. Now this, this, okay. Everybody, everybody saw that in real time. Did I? Um, it. Uh, okay. I. Uh, here's what's good. It. <laughs> it. It replaced all four of our pieces out here too. Um, so. They still exist. There must, still... Be, there must be some sort of glitch in the in the plugin. Isn't that that's okay, so so we randomly we replace these two. Um, let me undo and uh, preserve some of these. Just in case. I uh, now we know what happened last time, and that makes sense actually. But um, but now we know better. Randomized components. Yeah. See, so in that case, we just happened to get lucky that we got you know, or unlucky that we had all four of these replaced by the single one. So good. We're learning in the moment. Which <laughs> is always. I do love me some. Uh... And learning in the moment. Always fun for everybody out there. <laughs> uh, all right, same thing. Let's take these and let's use Chris Fulmer's scale and rotate randomly. Minimum scale we want. Let's again 0.9. Max scale 1.1. So it's not like a huge variation or it could be like 1.2, something like that. Minimum rotation, 0.1, max rotation. Let's get bold. Let's see what 0.4 does. That may not be bold. Now the axis, we the axis on this is still at the corner. 
So in this case, I think we want the center. Let's see what happens. Wish me luck, Jody. Good luck. <sighs> Can't wait to see what happens. Got my fingers and toes crossed. Okay. I think that worked, but I think our scale is a little too much. So let's just dial that back. But otherwise, that seems to have worked. We've done what we wanted. Just a little too much. A little more than we needed. Da, 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 da. Where's that? Uh... All right, around the center, minimum scale is 0.9. What did we do it? Let's, let's dial this back even farther. We'll make it 0.95, 1.05, and then rotation 0.1 and point. Well, let's just make it zero and 0.2 or 0.15 or something. How do you think? <laughs> I'm just talking to myself. It looks good. Yeah, no, it's fine. I mean, sometimes you got to talk go. to yourself. Don't. It's the only way to get intelligent conversation. My my conversations with myself. Thank you for thinking they're intelligent. I don't typically go that far, oh, but sorry. thank you very Did much. I say intelligent. I mean intelligible. Oh, okay. <laughs> my bad. Nice. All right, um, we are well on our way. I think we're like, we're getting there. Um, we've got a little bit of time left if we want to take it, but we could also hand this off to Aaron to complete some of, you know, the other bits if he wants to. Some of the, the there's there's pieces of this if we're following our, our art. Schedule. Yeah. <laughs> That are that are not so random and crazy, and that that could be done fairly straightforward with the the tools, and just need some time and attention. So we'll maybe do a little bit of this, but we can also hand it off to Aaron. And uh, but again, I'm not I'm not committing Aaron to uh, building on this model. <laughs> this was kind of the idea, but whatever he wants to do is obviously will. We'll His prerogative. His prerogative. I am going to soften some of these. So he's not commenting, so he must be eager for you to just hand it off to him. <laughs> you know, I, I know. I also. I remember what happened last time. I handed off the train model, and everything that went wrong with it was like, oh man, this model sucks, but you know, it was done by Tyson. That's the way it goes. I mean, I'm kidding. No matter what, that's going to happen. There were some serious flaws with that train model after after I got done with it, and I was like, "Oh, oh man, who made this?" <laughs> Hindsight is twenty twenty. Usually. Yeah, something like that. I I I don't know if and. It, if we get this to a point where like, oh, actually this is looking really kind of fun, towards the end of the month, maybe we'll dip our toes into like V-Ray and see if we can render this out with some uh, ambient occlusion or something and just kind of give it that look to that. But if we don't to that end, I don't know. I'm, I'm trying to leave a few lines in here so it looks kind of sketchy, but I'm also trying to soften um, a bunch of these edges. Let's see how that looks. Yeah, that's was, that was okay. Let's do the same thing over here. Soften that one and break some edges so that we can... Let's break some edges! Okay, broken edges. Um, did you taper it already? Did I miss that part? Yeah, we tapered it a long time ago. Where were you? Oh, man? we did it. Okay. I thought you undid it. Sorry. Oh, no. It, it didn't look very tapery. Here, tapery. Okay. It's, you're right. It's not as tapered as this. Yeah. 
Um, we could taper it now. We'll break all our components, but we could uh, if we wanted to. But, I, you know, that's why I think this original, like if we really wanted to meet that taper, and, and I, I wasn't referencing it, you know, I should have been watching a little closer. But we're gonna stay with this. And I'm not gonna bother with that we're off on our size. But <clears throat> that is how it's gonna be. I think it looks pretty good. Okay, out there. <laughs> how are we doing? Phew. We did get this far. I didn't know if we'd, if we'd get through. I mean, it's kind of, we did tiles and rocks and blocks. So in some sense, you're like, well, you only modeled three things, three ideas. You did play with a lot of, uh, there's a lot of trial and error happening in there. For sure. Has anybody, I, I keep, I keep being like, who's got a, who's got a better idea of how to do this? Like, uh, you know, anybody out there? Keep waiting. <clears throat> oh, there, there are opinions and ideas plenty for sure. <laughs> um, Aaron said you should finish the bricks. You should finish. I don't know. I'm not sure if you tried to capitalize you or not, but. Uh, no, man. I mean, I should finish. Maybe another, maybe another day. <laughs> no, Aaron, I, I think you should do the bricks. I think, you, I, I think you should come in here and, and show us how to do this better. This was the way to do it that's like, okay, you know, here's amateur hour. Aaron's going to step in and be like, let nice. Me, let me set drop the, the mic. Really, yeah, set the bar really high so that when or if he fails no if he fails i'm not gonna say when jeez gosh Joey, that's horrible. <laughs> kind of person are you? um then at least you can be like Psh, i wash my hands of this right, yeah, done. <laughs> um I, i'll tell you what though i'll tell you for me legitimately this is in a pretty fun place. Sometimes you're modeling on something and, and as you go on and if there's pain points and stuff, you're kind of like, I'm not inspired to keep going. I could easily keep going on this. I think this is a solid start to creating a really interesting model. Um, so it, at least for me, it's at that point where I just, I, I want to dig in. I want to start tweaking rock placement. I want to come up here. You know, we can build out some of the tower um, the, <clears throat> it'll be fairly straightforward to copy some of these tiles on the other uh, this other roofs and uh, the the block um, like Aaron was was saying you know we we could come in here let me turn shadows off that question earlier about how many polygon how many polygons SketchUp can handle it can handle uh, 147,000 without shadows and then with shadows I'm being random of course but you, shadows is, is when you're done yeah shadows is is basically like adding more the same polygons in right because it's, it's all surface based yeah shadows is going to really in, be hogging your computer um Well, we're at that point. What's everybody doing for the weekend? Uh, what's the uh, what's on everyone's agenda? I don't I don't think we have plans here. We've had uh, 
bit of a snowy week, but sun's out, it's cold, but it should be reasonable. Yeah, I'm uh, I'm glad that I don't have any digging out to do. I'm ahead of the head of the curve on on all my snow shoveling. We're going to we're going to mention Jody's poor wife. Hmm. Uh was was out shoveling and uh kind of took a twisted twisted knee, twisted ankle. We won't get into details, but ouch. And you know, that's not uncommon for the sort of the, this time of year, so that Yeah. Sucks. The worst, the saddest part about all that is that now I have to do all of the shoveling. That's right. <laughs> but not anymore, because we're caught up. It looks like this weekend we're going to get up into a... Tomorrow's supposed to get all, get all the way up to 45 degrees. Might, uh, might go out sunbathing. So Andy's going to work on his uh, on his chicken factory. And Aaron's gonna play Gauntlet. No, wait. He's referring. I'm. Re he's referring to you throwing down the Gauntlet. My bad. But I kind of do want to play Gauntlet now. That was. I, uh, I do too. That was an arcade, an arcade game that I would go and plop quarters down on the next in line spot. Yeah. I don't even know where you, where you play that now. I, I I'm feeling similar. Like, oh, Gauntlet. I kind of want to make something from Gauntlet now. We could take a model Wait, like fun. this and tweak it towards that. Uh, obviously, we can keep going on these these blocks. And see that, like you tweaking the blocks is is akin to you know the the Bob Ross of you know adding little touches here and there. It's one of those things that you can just once you start once you start tweaking this little thing and that little thing, and all of a sudden you can look up and four hours have passed. Mm-hmm. Entirely true. Okay. I just looked up artwork from Gauntlet and realized that I'm, uh, I, I would be disappointed to start trying to make assets. I forgot how uh, <laughs> how chonky the graphics were. <laughs> like it's old enough to be, uh, maybe we don't want to do that. Yeah. It's one of those things that through the filter of time... And, uh, and age has <laughs> somehow it got better in the past. That's funny. Yeah, it's not as uh, not particularly amazing to look at. Bummer. I guess there's probably a 3D gauntlet. That's what that's what Paul's suggesting. Um, I think it's still too cold to get out into my shop, though. Are you? Yours is at least attached to your house. It's a little easier to justify. It's true, and I did set up a minor heater in there, um, so I can at least get it above super freezing temp. Um, I don't know, though. I don't know if I'm going to be out in the shop this weekend. I'd like to be, but that cold is—we all know that cold is a disincentive. Low of 19 freedom units. <laughs> it's and too much work to get my shop up to 45 degrees to work, to be able to work in it. Yeah. And, you know, with with uh, admiration for all of you who are in the colder places and, and chomp through that like nothing, I'll just own up that it, it easily disincentivizes me anyway. Yeah, I keep thinking, so I mean, had I been smarter, I would have designed my shop differently and it would have been focused on retaining hot or cold, although it does a good job in the summer, I can't complain. The problem with having a place where the, a big part of its comfort is opening the doors and letting it, letting the outside temperature in, it doesn't work well whenever it's cold outside. <laughs> All right, so there's obviously uniformity in here. Um, like I say, this is at the point where you, you know, we're, we're tweaking and we're out of time uh, for this week. Um, might scrap these and, and start again with a different approach, but 
started doing some some bricks anyway there's a, a lot more to do uh but yeah so here we are you got rocks done and you got ceiling tiles done or roof tiles mm-hmm you're in a pretty good place so we, we started so I, I think we'll call that good okay stick a fork in it yeah so thank you everyone thanks for joining us um come back next week for whatever aaron is going to do oh, nice. like what you mean to say is to be continued and that way it's we're ending on a cliffhanger oh that's like proper tv movie uh like very designed and intentional you're right uh yes that was totally intentional uh, Andy had a quick question before, uh, before 2 o'clock the show's been turning into a pumpkin. He said he tried adding a shortcut for the show Hide Shadows and he can't seem to do it. Really? Is that one of those where you've got to have a certain tool selected to be able to set the set the shortcut? Let's find out. Um, you certainly can do it. Uh, I'll uh, this... So, one of the things that, 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 that could be helpful with this, but it, it could be as pedantic as you search for shadows and let's say view shadows. So let's see under the, uh, oh no, should be there. But view shadows is what you want to set. So try that. It should be. Um, if you create a keyboard shortcut for view shadows should be able to toggle it on like that see I don't want to come in here and start messing with these rocks Stop me, Jody. Stop me. Quit it. Quit it. What are you doing? <laughs> I just want to get in here and... Just tweak? Tweak. Maybe that's what the rest of your day will look like. You I'm know, having... Everybody I'm else having... will be gone, and now you can you can get in there and do the less, uh, less camera-friendly yeah. patching holes. And... Nope. Andy said thanks. Got it working. Sweet. But I, I'm having fun with this. I want, I want, to, I want to keep going. So... You know, it, what Next it makes time. me think of is that that line in Napoleon Dynamite where he's like, yeah, I spent like three hours on cheating the upper lip or whatever he said. Yeah, I think he referred to, you know, the chiaroscuro shading. Yeah. <laughs> if it, maybe he doesn't be like, I spent three hours on your upper lip. I'm really proud of that shading. Something is so great. Yeah, that's very much, very much the thing is you're just, you've just settled into spending three hours on the shading. Yeah. All right, there's Naraj enjoying. <laughs> what, it, what it reminds me of is the Harry Potter, first first Harry Potter book slash movie, and then whenever they took him out onto the little, oh, yeah. the, the little shack in the, on the island in the middle of the, uh, the lake. Let's call that what this is. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. It's, it, it's um, you know, like you're taking a test. Pencils down or, or uh, you know, the great... British baking show. It's like, you know, let's get, get one of the hosts to be like, time is done. Down. Put it, put, put that, put your cakes away. Yeah. I need to go. Uh, there needs to be a new season of that. I need to go, go catch up on my British baking show. Love it. Thanks everybody. Thanks again. Um, that was fun. Uh, that was fun. We'll see what happens next week. <laughs> so have a great sure weekend. Week. Every, it'll be every bit as exciting as this. I will be. All right. Enjoy your first February weekend, everybody. Yeah. Cheers. See ya.